Validation warfare is the struggle between both the male and the female gender to fulfill existential satisfaction at the expense of the other gender in a form of destructive competition because of psychological differences resulting through gender roles and the cultural perceptions of expectation. Hello YouTube, this is Manslave, and um, I run the Validation Warfare YouTube channel. I'm the primary person who runs the channel, and... Uh, the disposable human doing. He uh, he's my colleague in uh, this project, but um, he's uh, he's he's not the ad, uh, the admin. Uh, so it's me who mostly answers the comments and makes responses. And I'm going to be changing this uh, channel logo very soon. I'm working on a different one, um, and I just got to do this sound check really quick because I know it's some I know it pisses some people off, and uh, they don't like it. But I need I'm, I'm just very conscious of my sound levels, and um, just making sure everything goes good. Um, all right, uh, just to let you know about my channel, um, it is I call it Validation Warfare, and I offer analysis and commentary from an elite MIGTO perspective, and I'll just define validation warfare for you know the normal people who don't actually put effort into understanding things. Okay, validation. Oh, <clears throat> and this is my own definition from just a, a while of like research. Gosh, at least a year's worth of actual hardcore active research. Um. Validation warfare is a struggle between both the male and the female gender to fulfill existential satisfaction at the expense of the other gender in a form of destructive competition because of psychological differences resulting through gender difference uh, resulting through gender roles and cultural perceptions of expectation. All right. Now me and and uh, the disposable human doing, we're both a duo. And uh, from what I hear, he's going to be moving uh, changing locations, so he might not be making videos with me very much in the near future or whatever, depending on whether he gets his own equipment um, and so forth. Um, he's not fired or removed from the project. He's uh, he's an honorary uh, found. He's an uh, the disposable human doing is an honorary founding member of. Um, of this uh, think tank that we've got going on here. Uh, that's not the official name of it, but that's a description of what it is. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, it's just he's moving away, so you might not be hearing very much from him uh, in the future. I don't know if that's going to change or whatever. Uh, he hates this town and he wants to get out of it. Uh, we do have a lot of dumb fucks around here that like that, that don't drive properly. They're very selfish and greedy. They step on people. Uh, you know, they just, they, they just mistreat a lot of people and that sort of thing. And there's a bunch of meth, uh, fucking like meth labs all over this county. Um, and, uh, well, yeah, that, that's a whole nother topic. I mean, and he gets bored with all this and there's just a bunch of young people that have like, that don't really do a whole lot of contribution to like anything and they're just like insignificant people and then there's a bunch of older people that just freaking want to be American pickers and but then there's even some younger people to do that but yeah American picker wannabes meth dealers um just you know and there's no surprise why the disposable human doing would not want to be here anymore um in this geographic area um he i guess he feel like, feels like he's moving on to greener pastures now me this is where i've been living pretty much all my life and i like the scenery and you know i mean i, I guess i got a high threshold for tolerating shit which brings me to the reason why i'm making this video uh you know i can't really ignore this stuff anymore um you know, I, I've got a reputation for getting on people's nerves, uh, whether or not it's intentional. Uh, seems like I have the natural gift for frustrating people. Well, I, I want my audience to understand why, uh, why I'm so skilled at getting on people's nerves. It's, well, I'll, I'll just, like, reveal my secret. 
it's because a lot of people get on my nerves too uh, and all I do is return the favor <laughs> so uh, you know um, yeah that's that's how it goes all right now I've been receiving um, some threats from people and I don't feel personally threatened like my safety is breached or whatever because uh, I don't know where these people live and I seriously doubt that they'll ever do anything to me but it's the thought that counts uh, we live in a society these days where a sandwich comment could cost you your job and you know the sandwich comment you know saying get get back in the kitchen and and uh, make me a sandwich which just infuriates females it's the equivocal inward that that affects blacks you know uh, what the inward is to blacks apparently sandwich comments are to women now I don't go around making sandwich comments so that's why I don't feel as if you know this is really something that affects me and I'll be back in a minute <clears throat> Uh, all right, yeah, but I see people they uh they make sandwich comments <clears throat> and <clears throat> all they really do is prove how much of a temper women have uh deep down underneath their dolled up faces, and I mean all it does is prove that point, but with some risk to the person making the comment. <clears throat> since we live in a society that actually revolves around female interests uh sometimes at all costs um i got a video that is just got to check the status all right it's processing the video i got a title name all that good stuff I explain why things are there in the video um now Snake Pliskinist has made a video talking about block bitches, and I really don't want to be a block bitch, but here this week I've had to block two people, and um, in, in about a week's time I've had to block two people. Well, two different people. Um, I've did uh, I've blocked uh, four users, and three of those users were the same person. I've never been pwned. I blocked him because he said he's gonna rape my chubby ass. Um, where is that at? Oh, inbox. All right. Okay. Comments. Just gonna get to that here. Never been pwn. Yeah, here's the comment right here. And if you see this logo and that name, never been pwned, uh, the dude is bad news. Let's just go open that. Never been pwned. Okay. I want to get to this in just a minute. Okay, what what never been pwned had said is, he says, um, he comments on a video that, that I titled a video called Predator Behind the Doll Face, Female Nature Revealed. Okay. And <clears throat> I'm talking about, in this video, a... Um, well, the disposable human doing may have been in this video also, but what we do, we talk about um, how women are emotional and financial, and re basically they're they're they are they are emotional uh, they they are emotion and resource uh, vampires or predators. I mean, I'm not saying that vampires really exist, but man, but vampire is a metaphor. Uh, you know, a predatory entity. Um, certainly um, is is a fitting type of description for these women. Um, they they are emotional and resource predators. Uh, not all women, uh, not all women do this. But <laughs> how many women does it take to get the stereotype? Apparently, it only takes. Uh, uh, right now, with the Sandy Hook shooting, it only takes one man to uh, get masculinity questioned. Um, you know, one man goes in there and shoots a bunch of kids, and then all of a sudden now, uh, masculinity is being questioned, and masculinity is being criticized, and the whole male gender and the male culture and the whole male identity is um, under the microscope because of uh, what happened recently this month in December of uh, 2012. 
uh, with the Sandy Hook uh, uh, spree shooting, uh, we see that that men can, and not only can, but they are being put under the microscope um, of public scrutiny for the things that they do. Okay. Um, you know, so the shooter who killed those kids at the at the uh, at the elementary school uh, that was an un, un, that was a unacceptable act. Nobody should be doing anything like that. The kids never deserved it. All this other kind of stuff. All right. I do not condone violence, <laughs> and uh, especially those kinds of things. You know, uh, shooting people and causing harm. Uh, regardless of that statement, regardless of my viewpoint, regardless of my uh, passive nature and uh, lack of criminal history, uh, never been convicted of a crime because I've never been arrested, never been arrested with a crime because I've never been charged, or I've never been charged because I've never been arrested. Okay, um, I don't have any criminal history, um, and I'm 32 years old. Uh, I don't believe in harming people, but yet, nonetheless, these pieces of shit like never been pwned will go around making comments and alleging that I, and it's not just that, but it's, it's Mike Murdoch and a few other people who stereotype men, and they, and they do this dirty work for women. They stereotype men as being harmful and predatory and all that, and I've told these fuckers that, you know, they're just, just they're, they're, <clears throat> they're attacking men at the core, um, the most inner core of the self-identity, and of course they don't care, you know, because saying this shit, I guess, gets them off. Or, you know, they, well, they, I guess they'll feel validated, you know. Maybe some girl will cry on their shoulder and they'll feel like they have a reason to exist or some other stupid shit. Okay, so this dipshit right here, uh, never been pwned. You know, when he says pet some, you know, uh, that that's fine. That That's acceptable. I mean, really, he doesn't know what pet some means. Um... And when he, when he says you should really go pet it, that that's actually amusing. Okay, so there's no harm in that, according to me. You know, he's that's not the problem. Um, and uh, calling me dumb fuck is fine because that's what I do to other people. You know, it's a universal standard. You know, it's just a name. Okay. <clears throat> uh, here's the problem right here, where never been pwned says once I find you and rape your chubby ass, you fucking ma uh, mangina. That's the problem right there, and that's what got that dumb fucker banned right there. I don't go around saying that I'm going to rape people or whatever. I do not condone violence to anybody, okay? Um, it's just, no. I mean, what if I went around saying that kind of stuff to people? They wouldn't like it either, and I would have consequences. Now, this little shitbag right here is lucky that all I did was was block him. Okay, uh, because I assure you, this is something that will cause a person to lose their job if they say it in the workplace. And you know what? I found it. It doesn't even it, it. You know, it doesn't even have to occur in the workplace. Just happening to you know, but you know, with all this shit going on nowadays and all nowadays and all these policy changes. Just happening, just that kind of stuff happening to a coworker, even off duty and off of company prop, uh, property, uh, will, you know, uh, get somebody some consequences. Uh, this stuff is in the news like all the time. It's everywhere, you know. It just, especially if the the victim is female, and uh, that's going to become a cliche. Very, very soon. Um, you know, this whole rape culture thing is, it's going to have its cost because, you know, the, the boy that cried wolf, yeah, there's your clue right there. And uh, you women out there that make these false allegations, I'm not saying that every rape allegation is false, but uh, a whole lot of them are. And I assure you, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have its cost because... You might have a lot of capital right now, uh, a lot of um, of uh, appeal or or desirability, but it doesn't last forever. You know what I'm saying? 
and just keep crying rape without any evidence, you know, without anybody actually committing the crime like that news reporter did, uh, you know, to explain why she missed work. And uh, just like that girl who um, who didn't answer her phone calls and uh, cheated on her boyfriend at that party. Yeah, and um, that I did in another video. Um, uh, showed a clip of that news article in another video about the uh, disposable human doings uh, accuser update. And uh, yeah, just keep doing this stuff and see women do it. To, I mean, they're the ones doing it, you know. They're just, I, I just want them, I, I just want them to have enough rope to hang themselves with. I mean, all I'm doing is just sitting back and letting this shit happen. But I'm giving warnings ahead of time. Give them warnings, and I'm telling them, it's like, you know, this this stuff's going to happen, and uh, you're going to have to pay the consequences. I mean, you can only run up so big of a bill in a restaurant without them kicking you out and calling the cops. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, if you order, you know, like a, a, a grilled chicken sandwich, and then a Caesar wrap, and then a salad, you know, and... and uh, some kind of soft drink or whatever, you know, that, that doesn't, that doesn't get on anybody's radar. But then when you order, you know, 10 or 11 pizzas and when, and you're the only person sitting there at the table and then, you know, uh, you order nine or 10 burgers and then you order all this other stuff, the, the, the waitress or the waiter or the, the, the cook or the manager, they're going to eventually get suspicious and they're going to wonder if you're going to pay for it. And there goes a whole nother sequence of events. And this happens in reality, you know, where us men are expected to live. <laughs> but there's going to be a breach of, of the bubble that women live in <laughs> that, you know, of where they think they can just get anything they want just because just cause they want it. Hmm. I mean... It might be postponed and be far off in the future, but it's going to eventually happen. You know, we just need the apocalypse, uh, not the apocalypse, uh, supposedly it's supposed to happen uh, in, uh, in, in less than 24 hours, supposedly. <laughs> I don't really believe it, but uh, anyway. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, the fempocalypse, that's, you know, that's why it's going to happen. And it's going to be such a great thing when you know, sarcasm emphasized, but, uh, you know, just imagine when all these men get accused of rape and they get put in prison and there's, there's no men out there paying taxes into the system. So all these welfare baby drama mamas can't afford to have more babies and milk the system and all that. Fuck, that's going to get a lot of people's attention. And, uh, you think women will ever wake up? And I say women because, uh, most feminists aren't, aren't men. Uh, they they might they might call themselves that, but I mean, like like Stardust mentioned, you know, a lot of women will not self-identify as a feminist. But you bring up sandwich comments, you bring up selective service for women, like he talked about. You bring up all this other stuff, and then bring up abortion. All of a sudden, you'll see exactly how pro women's rights or pro women's privileges actually that most women are. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and you bring this stuff up, and yeah, and it, it just blows the cover right off of these women who pretended that they were not feminist. So anyway, <clears throat> that's enough about the consequence uh, section of this. Um, yeah, and so Never Been Pwned, he, he really breached um, and went across the, um, he, he crossed the line of decency. He, he violated the, uh, the tolerance level. And he paid a price. Um, you know, I blocked him, which I really didn't want to do, but I got to thinking. It's like, hey, I don't go around making comments about raping people, and especially, you know, the kind of comments that this person did uh, where he threatened sexual violence upon me. You know, so it's like this little dipshit's getting blocked, you know, and that's what needs to happen to him. Well, they came back later as... Uh, what was it? Um, uh, they came back later as all uh, you are all zombies rises said the same shit, same comments. Not about the rape, but uh, um, but uh, made the uh, but made a bunch of, of the same types of comments saying you need to go pet some mangina motherfucker and 
all that kind of stuff. And um, so, I, like, yeah, so Never Been Pwned and uh, You Are All Zombies Rises are the same person. And um, anyway, th there was another uh, U YouTube user account that they went by. It was like Halo Daddy or whatever. And uh it it's all stupid and um um now who's this now, I don't know who this person is. I just told them they have the uh the, the, the that they uh have the wrong person. So anyway um my one year anniversary video uh has really been getting a lot of comments and K Proxy 1001's really been pissing me off lately and um so anyway um I blocked right, there's never been pwned and then there is uh oh gosh who was it uh one of the Murdoch uh yeah um all comments um now here's this helios bumpers wait this that did i just mention that name like in my i think that person sent me some other messages uh yes yeah, this dude's a dummy um i said uh you know they say wow now this is some crazy shit I subbed for the bitch hating, uh, but stayed for the attempted suicide. Okay. I said to that person, I said, just wait until it happens to you. There are things that you at least pretend not to know about human psychology. You are trying to discredit me and my points of information by using a using an attack the messenger type of campaign my critics are so misguided and scattered by the winds about this so tell me what is now the leading cause of death for soldiers in the middle east with military suicides at, at all-time record highs what do you think is going on here in the larger human picture <clears throat> also said do you know what the difference is between a law-abiding citizen and a sexual deviant simply the lack of an allegation you act as if you don't know that women attack us in the most hurtful ways possible. They allege that we are a contradiction of our very selves as males and are void, void of existential worth. Just wait until it happens to you. Then you'll understand me. You label me as a woman hater and draw scorn and criticism onto me like a lightning rod. But I've discovered some things. <clears throat> what I mean by that is a contradiction of ourselves as men whatever through evolution whatever the case may be but throughout recorded history and even prehistory men have traditionally uh been throughout history to be the protector to uh protect protector uh the protector and provider uh they protect their children they provide for their children they protect their mate and they provide for the mate uh, they are even they are even they are ill they are even willing to fight, you know, their fellow man to protect their family. Okay, so they are protector and provider of the children. Well, women, women, women hurt men, uh, <clears throat> and, they get, and then through proxy get, you know, men to hurt men, um, by accusing a man of being a deadbeat, uh, which destroys the uh, perception of him being a provider it actually attacks um, the the whole role of him being a provider and it's a form of discrediting uh, so it strips him of his of his dignity of being a provider okay now an allegation of sexual assault especially you know to children it's bad enough to be, you know, to be labeled as a, uh, a rapist of women, but also to be labeled as a child rapist is one of the most hurtful things because, therefore, it strips the man of his protector title, okay? 
uh, therefore defaming and degrading a man and making him feel like he has no reason to exist. <clears throat> now, women, they have their own equivalent, but it's a little bit different since women traditionally are not the protector provider, but uh, but the the source of life as the womb. Um, you know, to base well, I guess to uh, to imply that a woman is a bad mother, I, I'm, I suppose that is har uh, hurtful to them. But there's another thing, which is to really there, there's other things that that validates women and that makes them feel like they have a reason to exist. They are more driven by their emotions and their passions. And to deprive them of that, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> is, in, is interpreted as something worse than calling them a bad mother. Um, you see, women will oftentimes take the kids away from the father. They know that I, what is it the word progeny or whatever uh but it's the whole you know what kids represent um you know the the result of procreation but anyway they know that depriving a person of their offspring is one of the most harmful and hurtful things to them um it you know, they, they do this to men all the time. Women will, you know, it, it, it's it's sometimes called the silver bullet. <clears throat> where, you know, when a woman is going through a divorce and she wants custody and control and just, you know, wants whatever she wants, whether it be access to the man's salary in the form of alimony or whatever, um, well... Anyway, especially if she wants custody of the kids, um, for, I guess, TANF reasons or financial aid from the state, um, she'll claim that the guy sexually assaulted the kids or, or raped her or something like that. And especially if, um, if she claims that the man sexually assaulted the kids, he loses everything pretty much instantly from the state, uh, the state caused, you know, uh, penalized him and all that. He, he goes straight to jail and the divorce goes right through. It's, it's like magic. It's like magical fairy dust, uh, as the way it's described. <clears throat> and women know how to do this and they teach each other these things and they, they, they do share, um, their, th this, uh, this knowledge of how to, um, harm people. And it's mostly shared through feminist ideology, which, okay, you know, about a decade ago, in the early 2000s, uh, you know, the United States government, along with the British government and other Western governments, came up with this whole big theory that, you know, all Muslims are potentially radical terrorist Al-Qaeda sympathizers, just because what they share in common happens to be an ethnic background and a religious ideology. Okay, and you've seen how well that flew. I mean, like, it was all over the news, it was in the media, it was in the movies, it's on the TV shows, you know, shows like 24, and all this anti-terrorism stuff, and it, it went on for years and years and years, and, and the government did it. Now, not just the American government, but other Western governments, <clears throat> and this went on with impunity. Now, there were some people who had problems with it, you know, activist groups and, and uh, patriots and... Um, and code pink but you know governments you know the state did it <clears throat> and um they you know they didn't think anything was wrong with it you know well just goes to show you <clears throat> the highest authority in the land you know the government did this stuff and the noble worthy cause was to keep us all safe uh from terrorist attacks well you know <clears throat> uh, anyway, so then, um, y you see that, that, and, and it's primarily men, you know, uh, exclusively men who were targeted in this way, uh, that were being the, you know, the, the jihad fighters or whatever they were labeled.
Okay, so you see it happen to men. Because uh, let's be honest, yeah, it, it, men were the target of all the frickin' wars and all this other kind of stuff and all the terrorist profiling <clears throat> and that sort of thing. Okay, and um, yeah, well, actually, feminists work like that. Feminists are are like, you know, the, the you know, okay, how the... M Muslims were portrayed, you know, how the Muslims were portrayed a decade ago in the early 2000s, you know, as being some kind of international conspiracy of of people that just hate the West and want to harm everybody all the time, and, and that's what I was getting at, and there was this whole big portrayal. Well, there actually is a group like that. Now, their goal is not to bomb buildings or, or damage airplanes or to really shoot people or anything like that. Their goal is to uh, <clears throat> is to spread out, you know, to spread hate, propaganda, control manipulation, you know, uh, like like how radical Muslims were, except for the radical Muslims are also, you know, uh, stereotyped as just wanting to blow everything up. All right, so um, <clears throat> anyway, well, you know, feminists they share all their hate and. And they teach women how to be, you know, bigots and to be toxic. And they, well, they don't really have to teach them. They just actually have to unlock all this stuff in them. But anyway, but they do te they do teach them the techniques of how to work the court system, how to play the victim. I mean, they, they coach them. Well, actually, this stuff was already inherently within these women's psyche. They just, the feminist function is like the guide. They're the key to the lock that will open the door and get the result. You know, like open up Pandora's box. I don't need to go into a whole bunch of that kind of stuff. And this is not woman hate. You see, like, it's not. Like like Barbarossa said, it's, you know, it, it's it's not hate when it's actually the truth. You know, and, and if criticizing somebody and making them feel bad is such a fucking crime. Well, fuck. Let's just put all the women in jail that made false allegations and destroyed a man's life, like what happened to uh, Brian Banks and a bunch of other guys. You know? Hell, when, when women lie on a fucking affidavit or, or cheat on their taxes, and when they do all this stuff, and then when they lie to their kids about their dad, or... <clears throat> When they lie to their boss about the reason why they're taking off for work, fuck, let's just lynch them all, right? I mean, no, 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 no that's too bad. And of course I'm using sarcasm because I don't believe in lynching anybody or any harm like that. But hell, let's just put all these women, round them all up in a fucking prison, you know? I mean, if if hurting somebody's feelings and saying shit that, that, that gets on people's nerves is so fucking bad... Then let's just round up all these fucking women that go around doing all this shit and just put them in a big prison, you know? And, and, <clears throat> no, I mean, it just, like Barbarossa said, it's not hate when it's actually the truth, you know? And see, it's the thing. What pissed me off is the double standard and, and the injustice. I mean, we all know that it's wrong to call a black person the N-word or to say all these other, you know, slurs toward other groups of people that, that happen to be ethnic groups, okay? We all know that that's wrong, okay? Why is it, you know, why is it not regarded as harmful to say all kind of bad things about a man or, or men in general? See, that's the problem right there. That's the problem right there. We all know it's bad when it happens to anybody else except for men. And that proves a point right there. Okay. Now. Alright. Um, now, KProxy1001 says, I see so many men put statuses on Facebook and Twitter daily about how they want to approach a woman and like, and, uh, that they like, but are afraid to, uh, or... Oh, fuck. <clears throat> Alright, here we go again. Another myth about men being afraid of rejection. Um, okay, KProxy1001 says, I see so many men put statuses on Facebook and Twitter daily about how they want to approach a woman they like but are afraid that she'll say no. I've heard so many men say it throughout my life. You try to act a lot... 
you try to act a lot harder than what you actually are. Man up and stop being such a weird ass faggot. I can't imagine. No, no, he says. He says right here. I can just imagine you calling a woman you're obsessed with and breathing heavily into the phone when she answers. You are that guy. Or let's say, you are that guy also. Grow up. So I say to this dipshit right here, I say, so amusing with with blatant stereotype. First of all, I don't call women on the phone. Secondly, I don't share your personal interest in making those types of phone calls to people. And that's where I'm actually, you know, ridiculing, ba bouncing back that, that, uh, that whole accusation at the dude. You know, <clears throat> he alleges that, that, you know, I would call up a woman and breathe heavily into the phone and all that. No, I actually don't do that. Uh, so that's why I say I don't share your personal interest of making those types of phone calls to people. You accuse without evidence. But then again, feminists did lead the way for no evidence needed to get a conviction. I am uh, counting these <laughs> I'm counting the days, buddy, until you have to travel down the same road as me. And um, I also say, I'm also watching and observing you, uh, you people's responses toward my situations, and I assure you that I will return the treatment to others. See, I'm, I'm doing a study about the differences in treatment between men who suffer and women who suffer similar or identical situations. So far, it's looking, uh, it's looking like people don't give a fuck about men, which proves a point. And why are one of those people, and, and why are, okay, what I meant to say was, and why are you one of those people who, who only has an account so that they can leave comments on other people's channels? See, because, like, Never Been Pwned is one of those. Like, you go to browse their videos. They have no videos. And, like, K-Proxy, 1001. You go to look at their uh, channel, and you look, browse video views, but they have no videos. You know, and then, like, everybody... It seems like almost all the people who criticize me happen to also be people who don't contribute anything back to YouTube. They don't make videos. They, they don't upload anything. All they do is create an account so that they can bitch about people's pages. Or, well, so they can <clears throat> basically um, bitch about um, people's um, comments or whatever. You know, these people are so, like, oh my gosh, they're just fucking, like, users. And five days ago, <clears throat> presumably on the 15th, um, KProxy1001 says, You continuously keep proving to everyone how weird as fuck you are. And also, it's more common for a woman to friendzone a man. And men aren't, and men aren't afraid of rejection? You obviously have no social life outside your computer screen, you retarded-ass internet dweller. Well, exactly. You you don't. I mean, see, you're the dumb fucker that don't even... All you do is fucking get on and comment on people's shit. And, um... Um... Okay. You need to understand this, K-Proxy1001, you retarded fuck-ass dipshit. Uh... Women are the ones who are hurt most by rejection because it means that they are not marketable. And that they'll never get a guy that will provide or protect them. Like, well, I can't be too hard on you for not understanding this. I mean, obviously, you are fucking retarded. I mean, like, I don't know. Maybe you had to, like, communicate through, like, you know, slurred gestures to somebody else as they were typing the stuff on your face or Facebook, on your YouTube channel. Or, like, you know, through YouTube and all that to say to me. I mean, because, like, if you had, I don't know, eight or nine, maybe ten more brain cells, you might be able to, like, speak, you know, in, like, a language that is recognized by people. <clears throat> Most people beside, you know, your handler. Anyway. Okay. Um, it, it's actually a myth or a, um, a stereotype that men are afraid of rejection. No. 
men are not afraid of rejection. I, as a man, know this. So does the disposable human doing and a bunch of the other guys I know. Okay, women go around projecting that myth. You know, like, have you ever noticed the way they act about stuff? You know, whenever they talk about rejection and all that, they act like that they know something about it. You know, and, and I'm not saying from experience, but I, I'm saying like, as in, you know, they have knowledge of how it works. Okay. You don't seem to understand. If if a guy's rejected, he's told to try again with a different person. That's one of the reasons why these guys keep going around to different girls, because they're kind of encouraged to do that. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Um, now, uh, okay. Now, women, how many times do you hear about how they, they're phobic about being the old lady with a bunch of cats in their house? Yeah. You know, they, 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 they have this fear that they're going to grow old and that nobody's going to take care of them and nobody's going to love them and also their shit. I mean, you're fucking retard, K-Proxy 1001. I mean, fuck. Like, why do you even persist? All right? Now, the same dumb fucker, K-Proxy 1001, also says to me, Okay, since you weren't going to kill yourself for sympathy, wh uh, were you doing it because you're a creep? <laughs> he says, you're a creep ass that was, that was messing with a girl who didn't want your penis? Uh... Uh, okay, he says, uh, because you're a creep ass that, that was messing with a girl who doesn't want your penis? Uh, not not that anyone does. Actually, yeah, I, I had to kick out my former girlfriend, okay? I actually had to kick her out of my apartment and, you know, kind of like, you know, get the hint to her that she's not welcome in my life, you know? Like, there's a lot of stuff that happened to me that you don't know about, okay? And I don't tell everything because it's just, well, first of all, you don't want to hear it. Second of all, you wouldn't understand it. And third of all, I, I do have some laziness here, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, <clears throat> um, um, and then there was another girl. Uh, who I had worked with, a different one, uh, and uh, and who flirted with me back in October of 2011 and told me that she was attracted to me. I don't know if she really was or not, but she at least played the game and all that. And then I friend zoned her, <laughs> uh, you know, for, you know, family home reasons and all that. I mean, like, I thought she's attractive, but maybe that's what pissed her off even more because... She, you know, like, well, she started with a comment on my Facebook uh, wall <clears throat> uh, where she said, you know, LOL, uh, I bet you think I'm hot. And then I said, I plead the fifth. And she's like, hey, that's not fair, butthead. Now I'm wondering. I'm like, I plead the fifth, you know, like no one should be forced to witness against themselves. She's like, that's not fair. Meh, meh. <laughs> she's like, anyway... And I don't know why she was, like, commenting on that post. It, you know, I was talking to somebody else on there anyway. And she butted in and said that, you know, she bets that I think she's hot. Uh, which she was actually one of the co-workers that I ignored, like, from the get-go. And, uh, and so anyway, um, you know, and I told her, it's like, I don't know what you're doing, but it's being interpreted as flirting. And her reaction was basically, well, so what if I am? <laughs> it's kind of caught me off guard. And I'm like, well, let's just be direct and say what you mean. And she says, I like you. I think you're attractive. Meh, I'd like to date you. Meh, meh. And I'm like, well, I think you're attractive too, blah, blah. So I'm like, so what? Like, well, what do we have in common? Well, we don't necessarily have to have anything in common. Meh, meh. Just on and on. I still got uh, some of the text and all that. I might, have to, I might have to dig this stuff up. It's been buried for about a year. Um, 
<clears throat> in my inbox or whatever. And uh, so anyway, um, you know, I talked to her for a couple weeks, and of course, uh, um, I uh, I friend zoned her and put her in the friend zone. But that's after I told her that I was attracted to her, and I guess that's why she got so pissed. And all that, and she's like, "Well, obviously, I can see that that you're not ready for this yet, man." And uh, and uh, anyway, and I mean, fuck, I mean, all I did was friend zone her. I mean, I just like, I was just like, "Well, no, I'm, you know, it's like I'm not interested in in a relationship or dating or anything like that with you." And all that at this time. <laughs> and I I thought I was being nice about it, but apparently she got fucking pissed. And then had a fight with my girlfriend. She did. You know, she had a fight with my girlfriend over Facebook. And they were brawling it all out and and all this other kind of stuff. Just like guys, you know, just like how guys are labeled as doing. You know, and um all this other kind of stuff. And then uh and then, you know, this girl did some revenge romance, got back with her ex-husband or whatever, and and rubbed that shit in my face, showed up at my workplace, you know, showing off this guy, which she had never done before, uh, not that I had ever noticed or heard about. And, uh, you know, so I invited her, you know, to, you know, hang out, spend New Year's and all that. And uh, hang out and just talk and that sort of thing. And uh, after all, she did pursue me. <laughs> and, you know, so about two months, you know, two months after she was pursuing me, I invited her to come over and spend New Year's with me. And I never heard from her and all that. And so, you know, uh, New Year's Eve, you know, I uh, did this, uh, I did this, uh, you know, homework, I gave myself a homework assignment, and what I did is I, I deleted a whole bunch of my female friends off of Facebook. I got rid of like 20 some odd friends in just, a, just like an hour or so. Just went through there, just one by one, deleting them all, and, uh, you know, unfriending them, females, unfriending females, uh, getting rid of females in my list on Facebook. I got rid of, I don't know, it was like 21, 22 of them maybe. Uh, the, um, you know, uh, right around, you know, midnight going into the new year that was going into 2012, because uh, right now is December 20th, 2012, uh, the day before the world <laughs> supposedly doesn't exist anymore. <clears throat> I think it will continue to exist. So anyway, um... So I unfriended like two dozen like that night. And then the next day, I unfriended another dozen more females. Uh, yeah, I got rid of a bunch more females from my list. And just over the next six months, I just got rid of just so many females until, you know, around late June of 2012, I pretty much got rid of all my female friends. And, uh, yep. And uh, then some of them tried to friend me back. My former girlfriend tried to friend me back. I ignored that request, and it's just been sitting there for several months. Uh, let's see. And that girl who who wanted to, to date me, um, the the uh, the other coworker, uh, the one that flirted with me and said that she bets that I think she's hot. You know, the one that a friend zone. Yeah, well, let's see, back in January of this year, 2012, uh, <clears throat> was about nine days after I unfriended her, she says to me, she says, uh, are, are you going to talk to me or what? Because I need a reason to, to keep you on here as a friend. And I'm like, I showed it to the disposable human doing. I'm like, damn, dude, I unfriended her more than a week ago, and she acts like she didn't even notice. I mean, like, don't you see the little button up there that says, you know, add as a friend, you know, like send friend request, you know, those don't appear anymore after you're friends with somebody. Anyway, so like, you know, I just kind of ignored her and then um, that's how it was for a couple months. We weren't friends on Facebook. Then um, back in May or whatever, 
I think she sent me a friend request and I just ignored it. <laughs> it's been sitting there ever since May. It's been sitting there for like seven months unanswered, not responded to. We're not friends on Facebook. And she's one of the females that I was attracted to and who was at least pretending to pursue me. You know what I'm saying? You know why I didn't jump on that opportunity? Because she's a twihard. Yeah. I mean, she she looks the type that is attractive, that, that I perceive as attractive. Uh, but she's got a couple tattoos, and I'm not interested in that. And even more so, she doesn't have a very good personality. I mean... She she talked the talk, you know, like, well, I'm cooking, I'm cooking a big pot of chili right now. I'm so useful. I clean up around the house, and I can do anything she does and all this other stuff. And, they, you know, just like men are stereotyped for behaving. <clears throat> exactly. I mean, like I'm, I'm, I'm watching all this stuff. I'm reading all the text on the screen. I'm, I'm reading it all. And I'm like... I just can't buy into it because my whole life I've been told that a certain set of behavioral attributes and characteristics are wrong and problematic. And for the first 30 years of my life, I believed that it was only men who, who were the personification of these negative traits. And then I see all these women doing this stuff, you know, and it's like... So all this distrust that I used to have toward men is now being focused on women, and I'm like, wow, this is interesting. Let's see, what, let's see who else is fucked up and hostile, you know? And, uh, yeah, how many women does it take? I mean, apparently, the like, you know, apparently 9 out of 10, uh... <laughs> You know, apparently 9 out of 10 apples in the basket can be rotten and have worms in them. <laughs> but you better not say that the whole batch is bad. <laughs> you know, all it does takes about 1 or 2 men out of 10 out of a batch. Let's say it only takes, hypothetically, 1 or 2, maybe 3 at the most. Uh, you know, men being bad apples in the basket before somebody says, well, the whole basket's rotten. You know, and see, that's the problem right there. You know, are all of them like that? Or all of them not like that? You know, you can't flip-flop like this, you dipshit normal people. I mean, that's what you do, though. Because you're like mental zombies, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I mean, you just like... I don't even know about you normal people. I mean, you people that call yourself normal. And the reason why I call you normal people is because that's what you call yourselves. You know, because when push comes to shove, you'll say, there's nothing wrong with me, I'm normal. You see, you, you deny that you're part of the problem, you see. And that's why I call you normal people, because that's your whole defense mechanism, is that you're normal. You know, you act like you shouldn't be subject to scrutiny. And so anyway, I gotta make these long-ass videos to piss everybody off. Because apparently that's what works. Can't use logic with anybody. You gotta use you know long videos. Uh, sarcasm emphasized, of course. <clears throat> well, this is another thing you people don't understand about me and the disposable human doing. We have vid libs, and that is video libraries. Uh, actually, more accurately called media libraries, media libs. And what they are is they're usually an external USB hard drive filled up with a bunch of stuff. Uh, movies. I use this computer to rip and transcode my own movies, uh, DVD movies, put them on there on the external hard drive <clears throat> so I don't have to swap out discs, discs every time I want to change a movie. Just plug it up to my Blu-ray player, Disposable Human Doing. He does the same thing. And... Um, and, you know, and you just watch them through your Blu-ray player, since it's really convenient, just queue them all up through a menu, and, um, I guess like it's TiVo or something, not exactly, but anyway, uh, TV shows, music, just like whatever, but, you know, actually what we really, you know, use them a lot for, we, um, we use this little thing right here, and, 
we download a lot of videos of Barbarossa, Stardust, Girl Writes What, Man, Woman, Myth, that Cynical Cynicism, Rocking Mr. E, um, gosh, that Snake Pliskinist, oh, gosh, a bunch of other good, uh, bunch of other good people on YouTube, and save their video files, um, on an uh, external USB hard drive, and we build up, um, and we save our own videos, and we save up all this stuff and we study it. And we've been doing this for since most of 2012 when I actually got my Blu-ray player and then disp the Disposable Human Doing got one this summer. And um, anyway, we, uh, we do this. And see, this is about study. Also, we have a whole bunch of uh, movies about the gender war. Uh, movies such as, um, oh gosh, what's a good one? Um, uh, Friends with Benefits, Crazy Stupid Love, He's Just Not That Into You, um, The Room, Bill's Gun Shop, um, Slave, uh, Girl's Life, um, what else? <clears throat> a whole bunch of movies. And we study these movies, and we do the same thing that Man, Woman, Myth does. And he used this in his documentary series, and we we study, all, we watch all these movies, and we carefully study them. You know, understand how gender relations are, especially as shown in the media. Now, Anita Sarkeesian of Feminist Frequency does something similar. Now, I don't know if she has a... Uh, I don't know if she has a Blu-ray player. Well, matter of fact, she probably has a nice, pimped-out Blu-ray player now since she ran off with $160,000 of donors' money, people who donated to her cause because she played the role of the victim. Uh, as Stardust accurately pointed out, she kept uh, portraying herself and women to be victims um, of men, you know, of men's comments and all this stuff. Um, of course, that donate button on her website and her YouTube channel, and her Facebook page, all this stuff, very, very active, $160,000 flowed toward her direction. Uh, she said she needed this money to produce a video series, maybe even a documentary, but anyway, a video series, which she called uh, Tropes vs. Women. <clears throat> well, damn, that was six months ago since uh, she got all that money and, uh, and was gonna do her Kickstarter project and all that, well, you know, six months went by and, uh, no videos produced. And if you look, before she even raised the money, she already had a really nice video camera, had, you know, some studio equipment, and had a lot of money. Uh, money, you know, she gets for playing the victim, you know, that's what women do. And, <clears throat> whether or not they're really victims or not, actually, they're just victims of themselves, you know. They want all this freedom to choose, to make choices, and to do all these things, but they they want to somehow also be liberated from the consequences of what they do. Really, you know, women are just victims of themselves, and maybe that's why they're victims, because they, they're also the assailant. You know, it's this quest for women, for women to be everything. That's why you see all these warrior goddess depictions of women and and how empowering it is for females. Well, this, this goes into even more feminism, you know. <clears throat> so, um, so anyway, um, but yeah, Anita Sarkeesian brought in all that money, one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. That's a nice luxury car, um, or a nice house, or whatever. Didn't produce anything. Didn't offer any return on investment. <laughs> it's a little too typical. So anyway, yep. Um, all right. Okay. So uh. So anyway, this one girl uh that wanted to get with me. She was one of those people that was into Twilight and. Uh, which that's, uh, I need to make a video, um, a video response to the Femetheist, you know, where she says a man may be a misogynist if, and the very first thing she says, if he pulls the knight and charmer act and claims that he can save, you know, the girl. 
<clears throat> somehow this means that he hates women. And these feminists twisted mind. All right. Well, I need to actually make up a list of of uh, indicators of toxic females, which is would which would include uh, being a fan of Twilight, since it shows a psychological profile of a woman with an entitlement attitude, um, daddy issues, a a the the uh, in, has inadequacy problems, struggles to be validated. Um, has other deep-seated issues, uh, you know, as seen by wanting the, the vampire creepy dude. I mean, this, when I watched that part where Edward followed Bella, you know, into the woods, this I was flipping, it was about a little more than a year ago, yeah. I was flipping through channels back when I still had cable TV, 